Okay, so this is Path Work, lecture number 11. Self-knowledge, the great plan, the spirit world. In the name of God and Jesus Christ, I greet you, my friend. I bring you blessings. I bring you love. Due to the fact that a few of my, a few friends have found their way here tonight for the first time, what I will say to you and will not be new to my friends who have followed my teachings or to those who are on the path to God with the help of a different teacher. However, each one of you might find inspiration and help to overcome a particular difficulty. For it is often necessary to hear the same again and again until it becomes deep knowledge and enlightenment as compared to superficial intellectual knowledge. Deep within the heart of each human being is the longing for happiness. Now, what is happiness? You may ask different people and you will receive different answers or def definitions. The spiritually immature, perhaps after thinking about it for some time, will say that if he had this or that fulfillment or worry eliminated, he would be happy. In other words, happiness means for him that certain wishes are gratified. Yet even if at times these wishes come true, this person will not be happy. A certain deep-seated unrest, unease, or undefinable bad conscience will remain. Why? For happiness does not depend on an outer circumstance or other people. No matter how convinced the spiritually immature person may be of this fallacy, the spiritually mature person knows that. He knows that he himself is solely responsible for his happiness or unhappiness. And he knows that he himself is capable of creating a happy life, not only within himself first, but as an inevitable result of this also without. Let me read that again, because I'm not sure I said that right. He knows that he himself is solely responsible for his happiness or unhappiness. And he knows that he himself is capable of creating a happy life, not only within himself first, but as an inevitable result of this of this, uh, result of this also without. The spiritually immature thinks that happiness has to be created first outside and that the outer circumstances, not necessarily dependent on his own doing, have to fit his wishes and thus inner happiness will follow. While the spiritually mature knows it is exactly the other way around. Many people do not want to know that, for it is easier to blame fate, the injustice, of the injustice of destiny, and higher powers or circumstances brought about by the fault of other people rather than to blame oneself. It is easier to feel a victim, for in that way one does not have to search, sometimes very deeply and with a maximum of honesty within oneself. And yet the great truth is, was and always will be that happiness lies in your own hands. It is in your power to reach this goal. You may ask, what is there to do? But let us first, let us see first what happiness means in the spiritually mature sense. And the answer is God. This is the only way happiness can be found. And it can be found right here, right now. How, I may be asked. My friends, so often people imagine God is way outside, far away in the universe, and it is impossible to reach him. A useless undertaking that cannot be crowned with success. And this is so far away from the truth. And as I have said on some occasions before, the entire universe is within each person. Therefore, God is within each person. And each living creature has a part of God within. And the only way to reach this divine part within is on the small and narrow path of self-development. The goal is perfection. The basis for this is to know yourself. This is indeed difficult. 
For knowing oneself means to face many a trait that is deeply unflattering. It means a long, continuous, in fact, never-ending search. What am I? What do my reactions, not only my deeds and thoughts, really mean? Are my actions supported by my feelings? Or do I have motives behind these actions that do not correspond to what I like to believe about myself and what I like other people to believe? Have I been so far really honest with myself? What are my mistakes? And although some of you may know some of your weaknesses, most people ignore a good part of them. And this presents a great hurdle. Even for those who've reached a certain height on their upward path, you cannot overcome what you do not know. Each fault is nothing more or less than a chain that binds you. By the shedding of each imperfection, you break a chain and thus become freer and nearer happiness. Happiness is meant for each individual, but it is impossible to attain without eliminating the cause of your unhappiness, which are your faults, which is any trend that breaks the spiritual law. Even if you have a karma from a previous life, it can be dissolved provided you work spiritually to find yourself and thus God. Man can be completely happy without sickness, worries, even death, as you experience it. Yes, my friends, even death. And if man were really perfect, and this is merely a theory, for if this kind of perfection is reached, reincarnation becomes superfluous. His return to the spirit world would happen in a different way than by decay, old age, sickness, or accident. It would be a sort of dematerialization. But even if you are not far enough yet to even, even if you are not far enough yet to even consider this, each one of you can approach this goal much faster than you may think is possible. And for the time being, you can find out how far advanced you are on this path by viewing your life and your problems. How happy are you? What is lacking in your life? In that measure that unhappiness exists in your life, or discontent, in that measure you have not fulfilled as it could be, should be fulfilled. And for those human beings who fulfill really, even the outside result is not immediately noticeable, even if there still remains as a sort of residue the outside manifestation of the past inner cause for a time to come. Because inside there will be a deep and peaceful contentment, a security, and a sense of fulfillment. And if that is lacking, you are not completely on the right path or you have not yet reached the liberation you are bound to experience after the initial difficulties are overcome before entering this path. Only you yourself will have the answer of where you stand. No one else can need answer this question for you. However, if you are on the right path and if you have that deep feeling of contentment and fulfillment and there are still outer problems in your life, that should not discourage you, my friends. For the outer form of the inner conflict you may be working on right now cannot be dissolved so quickly. The law that you have broken for a long time has to be readjusted and this takes time. The outside forms have to be remodeled, they have to be remade, and you yourself have to bring this about. The more you write the respective inner currents, the more the outside forms will gradually change, slowly but surely, until this is completely affected. The outer problem cannot automatically dissolve. And as I said, this will follow gradually, little by little. Impatience will only be a hindrance. And if you are on the right path, which, I, which as I said, only you yourself can find the answer for, you will live and feel the great reality of God's world right in your daily lives. And you will always be sustained by God's spirit world, which works with you and around you, and which is helping and guiding you, which will become just as real, if not more so, than your human surroundings. And it will not be a theory anymore. It will not be an intellectual knowledge, but you will live right in this world and feel its effects on you. God's spirit world is constantly at work to, bring, to help bring humanity as a whole and individually. And it is part of the great plan that God's spirit world has its task to fulfill. But we are bound by very definite laws, 
laws that are constantly violated either by the human beings or by spirits not belonging to the divine order. So these laws, among many things, contain the stipulation, if I may use this expression, that the free will of no individual must ever be violated. God's spirit world is therefore always waiting for that man or spirit and reaches out for its help. Who reaches out for its help? Let me read that again. God's spirit world is therefore always waiting for that man or spirit who reaches out for its help, but it never forces its help on anyone. So in other words, each person has to wish for God's help and fulfill the necessary requirements first before this help can be given. So if this is not done, we can only infer, interfere, interfere, excuse me, if this is not done, we can only interfere in very special cases, and again, according to law. It would be too complicated and involved to explain this now, but there is no error possible. So in other words, helping interference by God's world happens occasionally without the person having reached out for it, but only in the cases when such help was earned, perhaps by some merits in a previous life or even in the same life concerning something quite different. Each spirit in God's world, which is a world of order, has a definite task, and many spirits have their tasks in connection with human beings. And it is advisable for man to seek contact with the world of God and the spirits of God, for they and only they can help and guide him on the proper path. And there are cases when people think that they have found this path out of their own accord and without the help of higher, entity, higher entities. But this is not so. For whether they know it or not, there must, they, there must have been guidance and inspiration coming from such spirits. But it is extremely harmful to seek contact with spirits other than those belonging to the world of God. The harmfulness is manifold. It is not very contrary and extreme conditions that are both equally wrong, not only in this respect but in so many other things too. So one group finds it useful to seek contact with any kind of spirit, and due to the damage this will, must ultimately cause, directly or indirectly, sooner or later, another group of people, as a reaction, will say any contact with spirit is wrong. Human nature tends, unfortunately, to generalize everything, to abstain from the proper differentiation. The contact with God's spirit world is naturally not easy to obtain, and it should not be easy for it is the highest gift for man. He has indeed to learn things in order to receive the gift of such a contact. First of all, he has to go to the steepest path, the steepest path of self-development and purification. And he has to learn the special laws governing the communication with the spirit world of God. And these laws are very different from those where a communication with unclean, uh, and or merely blind and unknowing spirits is concerned. There are many ways in which it can be found out with what spirits you are dealing. There are many, there are many, excuse me, there are many ways to test a spirit whether it actually belongs in God's world or whether it only pretends to do so. And although it would be impossible for me in the time that I have available now to tell you all there is to know about the subject, I will give you a very brief outline. But I will say that whenever the primary wish exists to use these channels only for contact with the world of God, guidance will be given that the necessary knowledge will come to the person in question. And one way to test, to test is that a spirit of God's world will not seek to satisfy his own vanity. He will not demand admiration for himself. He will be a humble servant and will always give God the honor. He will not claim to be the highest, for there is always someone higher, the highest being God. And any spirit claiming he has so much power that he has no one above him to consult, that he has the authority for all, that he can decide without consulting spirits higher than him, then that should be enough proof that you are not dealing with the spirit of God. For whenever a spirit of God will talk to you, he will tell you there are many, many, many gradations, many, 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 many spirits and hierarchies. And above all is the spirit of Jesus Christ, and above Jesus Christ is God. So any spirit claiming that he has complete authority is not trustworthy. 
Furthermore, a spirit of God's world can be recognized by patience, love, and by the fact that although occasionally he has to say unpleasant things in order to help further furthering spiritual development, he will never humiliate or hurt in an unpleasant way. On the other hand, he will not flatter. These and many other tests can be made. These and many other tests can be made and should be made to recognize the identity of the spirits you are dealing with. Beautiful and even devout words are no proof in themselves. For many spirits exist who bring from their lives certain qualities with them and continue in that vein in the beyond. But for one reason or another, they do not belong in the order of God's world. So, if contact with God's spirit world is made, it will result in great blessing. For God's spirits are concerned to help each one of you to find happiness. And I was talking about, excuse me, to find that happiness I was talking about so that each one of you will not have an empty life or lacking love, affection, lacking respect, or lacking that deepest fulfillment that can only come with the, with the most a person can reach in spiritual development. This is the only purpose for such contact. Anything else should be secondary. And if other purposes seem also worthy reasons, man should never insist but should leave it to God. And if he finds it useful that these other purposes will also be fulfilled as a sideline, if I may say so, it will happen in a much better and more efficient manner. And you will get exactly what you want. And if you want happiness and you are willing to pay the price, you will receive it. By the same token, if people want with all of their hearts nothing else but God's truth and fulfillment and the fulfillment of God's will, they will receive that. So it is, so it is in the wish that the result is contained. And even if the result cannot come immediately, and by this I mean the spirits of God cannot possibly manifest themselves immediately, for there must first be many obstacles put out of the way. And while this lasts, the respective person test the respected excuse me, and while this lasts, the respective people are tested whether whether they are worthy of such a communication or, and if, unclean, unhappy, or suffering souls find their way to such a medium, the stress should be to teach them instead of allowing them to, to have control and to help them with a firm hand and help not the way they, being blind, imagine, but help to put them on the spiritual path. And you should not give up, but persevere, persevere, persevere. God, I'm having trouble reading. Let me read it again. But you should not give up, but persevere in humility. And seek what it is within you that prevents the clean and living spirits to manifest themselves. Whenever man has contact with the spirit world of God, it is the highest, the most beautiful, the most useful thing he can ever attain. And for that, a price has to be paid. So if you buy a house, the price will be higher than when you buy a shack. And you accept that as natural, and it cannot be any different. But when it comes, or when it concerns man's spiritual development, any spiritual values he is not so ready to accept. Excuse me. Let me read that again. But when it concerns man's spiritual development, any spiritual values he is not so ready to accept this very same state of affairs. Whatever you give, you are returned a hundredfold when spiritual values are concerned. While in material matters, it is an exact change of values in the best case. Salvation lies in the hand of each individual, and only you yourself can break the chains that hold you. But first, the wholehearted wish must grow in you, bigger than all else. Then the spirits of God will help you further. And now, I want to devote the rest of the time for your question. Question. I don't understand something. You say it is the spirit world of God that we should be in contact with, while the other will harm us spiritually and even physically. But everything is God's world. I don't understand. Answer. It is like this. There is the great creation by God with his wonderful law, including all the spirits he has also created and whom he has given free will. A great number of these spirits have voluntarily accepted God's laws and order and have thus remained happy. A great number of other spirits have broken that order, 
again voluntarily, and by that they have created unhappiness and disharmony for themselves. For happiness can only lie in the wisdom of God's laws. All spirits who have at one day, at one time or another broken this law have not yet found their way back to recognize this law as the only wisdom, as the only right course. And they stand outside this order voluntarily, just as they could voluntarily accept it. And one day they all will. But as long as this does not happen by their own volition and conviction, they will remain outside the world of God. God does not force any creature. It has to come by the free will of each individual, ultimately, and thus, is the beauty and perfection of God's laws. Every single child of God will return. Return to enlightenment, wisdom, return to happiness and freedom that can only be found in divine law. There are, no, there are not only spirits, but, all, but almost as many human beings who fall into these two categories. One group is those belonging to the divine order and perhaps even helping, working, cooperating in the great plan of salvation. This group, among other things, will, among other things, find out in spiritual endeavor, endeavors where they are still through unconsciously deviating from the laws. Hmm. Let me read that again. That was really confusing. This group will, among other things, find out in spiritual endeavor where they are still, through unconscious, though unconsciously, deviating from the laws. And there are many others who do not accept it, who create chaos in their surroundings and in their own selves by wanting to follow their own and very incomplete laws. I'll do one more question. Question. I would like to ask about my father, if it is possible. He died four years ago, and, so, and it so happens today is his birthday, and I have a sense of closeness to him. But at the same time, I am concerned about his well-being. Answer. I would like to ask about, or um, I will be happy to answer your question, but I will need a little time, and I will give you the answer, therefore, the next time you come here. Question. Okay, I'll do one more question. I would like to ask how it is possible to contact one's personal guide. Answer. This can, this can only be done if the purpose is to follow this path of perfection, if the reason of such contact is to help in one's own development for a particular problem in this development. And this wish has to be very strong and sincere and not half-hearted at all. And if this is truly the only reason and no sense of sensation and curiosity is mixed into this wish, if and when this is recognized by the spirits of God and it might take considerable testing, also in patience, endurance, the wish must not be given up too soon, such a contact will be established. The personal guide of the person in question will make himself or herself known, provided the answer cannot be obtained in another way. And let us say through human beings, for God's spirits do not answer questions that can be answered in your own world, for it is not their task to help you avoid a little bit of trouble to find out. They only answer what would be impossible for you to find out through human channels. Now, if all these requirements are fulfilled, as I have said, if they're fulfilled, you will eventually establish such a contact in one way or another. And now there are many questions a personal guide can and will gladly answer if, for instance, you do not know in a particular situation what the will of God is. Or if you want to find out trends and emotions within you that you are still unconscious of, or if you find yourself in a conflict in some, of, some kind of disharmony with your fellow creatures and you do not know the reason within yourself. For if such a situation can occur, you may be quite sure no matter how flagrantly wrong another person may be, there must be something within you that is responsible that you can be touched by it. And this and similar questions are answered if you are open if you open the door for truth and this can only happen if you are prepared to accept the truth under any circumstances even if you may hear that which you least like to hear so you overcome the natural resistance to hearing an unflattering or, uncom or uncomfortable truth your door is open and we can get through and i might add here that even if you do not hear occasionally that which you ha have feared to hear you will be extremely happy after you have thus established contact, not only because truth always has that effect, but also because you will then know for the first time that this spirit world with all of its laws is a reality and not a, not a theory.
and this will make you ha very happy indeed. Let me read that last one. And this will make you indeed very happy. Okay, I think that is a really good... Okay, there's a little bit more, and then I'm going to stop. The way the answer can be received very varies greatly, however. One may be... One may be that while you meditate and when you become still and ask this question, only wanting truth and God's will, suddenly a thought is in you, a new thought. And this thought will grow. And the more it grows, the more you will see how it is right, how right it is. And from any angle you consider it, there will be no doubt about the rightness and truth of this thought. And this may be one way. And it is the way of inspiration. And later on, you might get a direct perception in the form of hearing a voice within you, a new voice, quite different from thoughts or ideas that grow out of yourself. Or, or you may see something that will give you the answer in picture form. It is also often the case that such answers are given a little later through another human being who will be inspired. And there may be a test for you in just such kind of an answer, how you receive it, how your reactions are, etc. God's spirit world has many ways of working and presenting necessary knowledge to you. But it is always up to you and it is and it always entails entails your openness for it. And then you will receive. And if you are patient and if you do not want one particular answer only or if you are not set in your mind to receive the answer in one particular way, but leave it to God how it will come to you, then you will gradually establish such a personal and wonderful contact, perhaps quite different than you had imagined, but whatever, however God decides, will ultimately be the best for you. So by seeking this personal contact, you should, you should be your motive, and this should be the way you go about it. And that my dear friends, is Patrick Lecture number 11. 